Defense and Space News TV report. Today we are going to discuss about Su-57. India's Ministry of Defense, MOD, signed an agreement for New Delhi to fund the preliminary design stage of what was called the Future Generation Fighter Aircraft, FGFA. The development of this aircraft, which was originally intended to be a two-seat variant of the Sukhoi T-55TH generation fighter, was to be tailored to meet Indian requirements. This aircraft, now known as the Su-57, would be the logical follow-on for, and would eventually replace, some of the missions for another variant developed for India fighter aircraft, the Su-13 K. The 2010 agreement, however, only committed India to pay $295 million, which was funding for the initial design and concept definition phase if the, the 29th of January, 2010 first test, flight verified the technical viability of the program, then the 21st of December secures its commercial and industrial future, said Konstantin Mekhenko from the Moscow-based Center for the Analysis of Strategies and Technologies, CAST. CAST is a defense technology and political military analysis think tank that produces several authoritative analytical publications and annual reviews on the progress of Russian defense industrial programs. This reticence by New Delhi to move forward is due to a collection of factors one of which is the issue of the financial commitments their involvement in the program would obligate them to fulfill. Too many programs, one analyst, in comments echoed by other US and European defense industry representatives who have spoken to AIM, stated, I do not know how the F, Indian Air Force, can, as they say, get the from here when you look at all of the programs they have running in parallel with one another. The observation is based on what they see as India trying to diversify its supplier base switching the emphasis on procurement to more western-made combat aircraft and away from their traditional reliance on Russian designs, but without really letting go of the historical umbilical connection to Moscow. Procurement of 36 assault Rafale fighters under a package deal involving industrial offsets. The total program cost is estimated at $9 billion. A projected rerun of the medium multi-role combat aircraft, MMRCA, tender process that produced the selection of the Rafale. This time, however, the program would be for 100 or more of a lightweight fighter. Most observers expect this to end up as a contest between the Saab Jazz 39A Gripen and a variant of the Lockheed Martin F-16, the latter of which has been referred to as Block 70. Both aircraft would be fitted with an active electronically scanning array, Acer, radar. Purchase of 83, 73 single-seat and 10 two-seat, examples of the indigenously produced Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, HAL, Light Combat Aircraft, LCA, Tejas Fighter. These aircraft are an improved, Marquia variant of the aircraft that will supposedly be equipped with an Acer, a new electronic warfare suite, to include a self-protection jamming module, and air-to-air -air refueling. Creation of a modified variant of the Su-57 that would include local participation by Indian industry. Acquisition of a non-Russian carrier aircraft capable of being catapult launched. This would be acquired for the Indian Navy's next generation of carriers. The US has already agreed to sell India the Advanced Electromagnetic Aircraft Launching Systems EMLs, technology being installed on the newest US Navy carriers. Indian skepticism, the reason that analysts in both Moscow and in New Delhi are looking at the Su-57 program as the most likely candidate among those above to fall off the list of programs is that the Su-57 has too few backers and too many problems associated with its procurement. Officially, there has been a partnership between Russia and India on developing the PAC-FAR since 2007, which was years before almost all of the other programs above were in place. This puts the total cost estimate for the program at over $30 billion, a figure that has not been widely publicized by the F. A lot of the Indian public looks at the numbers between these two, Rafale and Su-57, and think the Russian option is a bargain, said one Indian aerospace expert. 
They do not realize that the $9 billion pays for all 36 raffles, but the $6.7 billion we would have to invest in the Su-57 would only pay for four prototypes, with the total program cost more than three times that of the raffle acquisition. A new engine, on the positive side, T-50 prototype number 2 finally flew in December 2017 with a new, 5th generation engine fitted to one of its two nasals. This engine, which has been referred to most commonly as is Blyai, item, number 30, is billed as a major improvement over the Saturn, Lyoka 117-AL41F1 engine that has powered all of the aircraft in the program, so far in addition to offering a higher thrust rating that the 117 model engine it is replacing, it has a lower specific fuel consumption, fewer parts overall in its design and a greater projected number of flight hours in its service life. The engine has been a cooperative effort by several fighter engine design bureaus, all of which have been folded into the Unified Aero Engine Building Corporation ODK. Series production of the engine will take place at the same plant in Yaffa, Russia that currently builds the 117 series engines. The first flight of the new engine is considered to be proof positive that Russia's military aircraft industry is capable of fielding a new aircraft that is a complement of actual 5th generation subsystems. For some time, the Su-57 program had been criticized as being the same engine, radar, avionics etc. as the Su-35, but installed in a stealthy looking airframe. However, Russian experts state that perhaps the biggest obstacle to the Su-57 program is that it has no champions pushing it to the top of the list of Moscow's domestic defense orders. Despite the fact that it has the potential to be a new aircraft in its own right, the Russian Aerospace Forces VKS, are reportedly not clamoring to receive the Su-57, as they are unwilling to cast aside the Su-35, a known quantity. For now, the VKS has only 12 Su-57S on order. According to the current plan, the first 10 of these will be powered with the previous generation 117 engine, and the last two will utilize the new Isdly I-30. How well these aircraft perform, particularly those that fly with the new engine, may well determine just how far the program will continue to run and if it will attract the kind of export orders it may very well need to become viable. Thanks for watching do subscribe, like, comment, and stay with us.